right, so you ready, Miss Supreme? I'm ready, I'm ready. Let's go record on this now. All right, Supreme. So, um, what's the origin behind your name? Oh, Supreme Diva. Uh, originally, my name was, when I first got into the uh, industry, I was a uh, model. And my name used to be Supreme B. So, um, I had uh, changed it to Supreme Diva once I stopped just doing modeling when I went over to... Um, when I went over to uh, porn. So then I just started calling myself Supreme Diva. I am a diva and I am Supreme. <laughs> <laughs> I am Supreme, do you see this? Yes, I am a uh, Supreme Diva. So that's that's what's behind it. Uh, I'm a real diva. Most people got divas behind their name and they're not divas, but I'm really a diva and I live like a diva and I'm a, I am a diva. So um, anything else you wanna know about? Uh, how long have you been doing porn? I've been doing porn since 2010. If I'm not mistaken, 2010. Uh, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I think it's been like since 2010. I'm, I'm almost sure it's been like since 2010. So yeah, but like 2010, 2009. Oh, I don't know, I forgot. What? Well, anyway, I don't know. I think it's like 2000. The end of 2010. I started in November 2010. Mm, okay. Some people told me. Somebody told me that. It was the end of 2009, but I'm not sure. You forget about things like that. Now, how did you get into porn? Well, first, um, I was doing the model thing, the modeling thing, and um, and someone asked me to. Um, they kept on coming at me, asking me to do BBW porn. I didn't even think that existed. So anyway, uh, somebody came to me, showed me Big Black Butt magazine, and I was like, Oh my God, that's gross! Because I was doing nursing and going to school. For nursing, so and, and you know, dealing with my children, so I would that really went my cup of tea. So, anyway, they showed me the book, and I thought the person was disgusted when he showed me the book. I was like, Oh, big black butt, yeah, that's powerboozing.com. So, they she was the editor in chief of that. So, anyway, long story short, um, I started doing my pictures and I stopped putting them up on MySpace. So, I started meeting people, and King Justin and um, uh, Jay Dickens and a few other people in the industry. And so I did my research, and so I had seen powerboozing.com, powerboozing, Gail and Tyrone, and uh, they started me off in porn. So um, I decided to do porn. Then they did the uh, reconstruction with nursing, so I needed the extra money because they said they started doing in-house registry. So then that cut me out because I was in the, uh, I was actually, uh, uh, registry, not registry, I was actually, uh, what the freak you call that? Come on, Tina. What is it? What is it? My spider senses. I was in a nursing agency, so they cut us out. So that's when I started doing porn. All right. Yeah. Now, what's the difference between you know, regular porn and BBW porn, or is it just the same thing? Well, they consider the porn industry is such a doggy doggy world. Uh, people don't understand that BBW porn is uh, an art to me because it's rare and it's rarely done. But back then when I was when I started doing it, I just thought of it as, as I still think of it as being an art. Uh, not everybody who do porn is porn stars. Uh, they could just get on there and do you know do, uh, do porn and you know put up on free sites and things of that such nature. And they think they porn stars, but you're really not a porn star. But anyway, um, I don't think it's a difference between BBW porn and the thick girls or smaller girls. But they do put us in a category as being fetishists in the porn industry. So we're not even considered porn stars in the industry uh, because, uh, I don't know, they, they, they really don't want us. To, we, we kind of like the bottom of the barrel, that's what they kind of say. But we do more hardcore than a lot of the chicks do. So Okay, hardcore has in You know, hardcore, you know, they do the uh, hardcore scenes, the anal and all that stuff mm -hmm. like that. So a lot of BBWs do a lot. I think the BBWs do too much. Uh, because our fans don't support us, they don't buy, you know, they don't buy things. Mm -hmm. There's no way it shouldn't be a wealthy or a a, a, a wealthy or a, a BBW that's well off that did porn. Uh, if we got so many fans, and we should have that, we don't have that. True. So it's just they want everything for free for for, for, for big women, but they're gonna pay the smaller chicks and the thick chicks for their products and stuff, but they won't buy ours. So it's it's kind of hard to try to say, okay, let me stick with porn and do porn. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So uh, it's a big difference. They they treat BBWs totally different than what they treat the other girls. Mm. So, Why do you think that is? Uh, because they don't know what's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what's good for them, you know. But no, I just think that uh, in society they say about 
uh, big people, women are obese, and uh, big people are obese. You know mm -hmm. that they got the gay community, they got the uh, lesbian community, whatever. They got everybody got their own communities. Like we got a BBW community, uh, big but. Well, BBW community. Uh, so, isn't BBW stand for big beautiful women? Yes, but in porn we call BBBW big black beautiful women. Big black. Oh, three B. B -B -B -B. Yeah. BBBW. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it's no such thing. Like in porn, there's no such thing as uh, when you do mainstream and stuff like that. They, it's no such thing as uh, SSBBW, BBW. We all BBBWs. So mm -hmm. that's what they call us. So yeah. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that too. S S B B W. Super size. Yeah. Super size. And what would they consider super size? B B W versus a regular B B W. Well, it, okay. See, people don't understand like when you like a size fourteen to a twenty four, uh, you a B B W. If you're twenty six and up, you're S S B B W. So I don't know why bitches be telling us I'm like, oh, I'm a BBW. Well, you know, you're not a BBW. You're big. You're huge. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you're still a big woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because some women uh, got apple shapes, uh, like, you know, uh, pear shapes. Apple shapes is like, I'm pear shaped. Yeah. It. Uh, so, I'm portion. You have women that's big at the top that's apple shaped. Then you have women that's built like SpongeBob. You know, <laughs> you got women that's built like I call them, I call them pancakes. <laughs> No front, no back. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of them just think they the shit, you know. And um, think that they, you know, better than us or whatever. But we all are still big women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. Did I answer that right? I think I did. Yeah, you did. Okay. So <laughs> what's the next question? Okay. What was your first porn scene like? Your first porn experience? Okay. My first porn experience, I had... Film with Parables and, and I had filmed with Justin. Uh, it was okay. It was all right. You know, all of all of I did like I done like maybe six films for Gail for uh, Parables when I first started doing porn. I did a lot of filming for them. I love those guys so much. I love them so much. But uh, but I thought that I was doing hardcore. I thought any I, when I first got in the industry, I thought any type of porn that you done it was considered hardcore. And somebody said, oh, D.B., you don't fucking do hardcore. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean to be hardy? You know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, that was up. And I was like, well, look. I was like, okay, wait, what do you mean? You know what I mean? So anyway, um, it wasn't hardcore. So that's when um, I went over and crossed over to Busty Baby Down. That's when I met Jay Dickens. Oh, I love Jay Dickens so much. Jay Legend now. But uh, he was the first person I ever done hardcore, mm -hmm. hardcore with. He was actually my first really large male oh. uh, ever, and he killed me. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I almost died. Yeah, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what's off limit and on limit when you're doing a film? Well, I don't. I'm not bisexual. I don't like women. I don't like bumble clocks. I don't like women. Uh, I don't do the gang bangs. I don't do ain't no ain't nobody sticking nothing in my ass. Uh, that is so nasty to me. I think that's disgusting. But each to his own. But I don't like all that. You know, I don't. And then, you know, you just really can't, you know, you really can't pass body fluids like that in this type of industry. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I only did two films where I did Heat Wave and I did uh, Mainstream. I did those two porns without condoms. But everything else, when I do porn, I do, you know, cover it up. Protection. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You better. You better cover up that. So I remember a few years ago they had um, the AIDS scare. Oh, there was there was somebody had AIDS in the industry, right? A yeah. few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And what were you thinking about? What was your mind frame like when that happened? Well, okay. Well, for one thing, let me do a public announcement here. Uh, I'm glad you did bring that up. You know, uh, public announcement. People in the porn industry, uh, we are different people. And uh, we just living in you guys' world, so we're trying to adapt to you guys' world. Mm -hmm. So when when HIV came out, the HIV scares come out. When the people catch HIV and contract HIV, they don't really catch HIV from within the porn industry. They catch HIV from dealing with other people outside the industry. Mm -hmm. So that's how it happened with the last scare with the, with the H HIV. She caught it from her boyfriend who was actually bisexual and stuff like that outside the industry and so it was spread it through you know to a few people i think i think that's what happened but you know i really don't be uh too much looking into the white porn that much but anyway it's it's, it's good to know it's not safe to, instead of everybody worried about porn stars with hiv i think you need to worry about hiv 
everywhere in this world because you don't know what your previous partner didn't done. You don't know what, you know, anything. So just to be safe, you know, you just need to protect yourself or have your partner tested because you never know. You better be scared of people on the outside of porn and you catch an HIV because people walk around here every day and think they can't catch HIV and think they can't catch um, STDs and they walk around here burning Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that a public announcement, you need to just check everybody. Anybody who you dealing with and you want to have raw sex with, you better do something about that. So you still sleeping with people who they previously slept with. So, yeah, you're right. So Okay, um... On IG, so you like face sitting on people. Face sitting? Yeah. You know, I, I well, like face sitting. Explain face sitting. How does the process go? Well, face sitting is um, when the person um, uh, goes up on your butt and stays up on there for six seconds, or sometimes you got you got extreme face sitters too, uh, who like you to sit down there longer than that, uh, and that's extreme to me. Uh, you got people when you face sit, you just take your, your butt and you flop down on their face until they tap out. Uh, you know, or six seconds get up, or you know, to tap out. So face sitting is like that. When I first did, when I first did my um, face sitting, I had face sitting for Mercedes, Mercedes BBW, and the guy was like, "Oh, I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from, I'm from Jamaica, Queens, and all this shit like that." Tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I sat on that man's face and I knocked two of his teeth out his mouth. The first time I ever face sitting, I knocked his, two of his teeth out at the bottom. And uh, when I, cause he made me so mad, uh -huh. cause he kept on saying, "Oh, you from Chicago? You weak, this and other." So I'm like, "Ah!" So I, when I flopped down, he jumped, and wow. when he jumped, you know, he couldn't move. Cause I mean, like I was like five hundred and something pounds, but no, no, I was four something. And uh, I flopped on him, and uh, shit, he got uh, his teeth was knocked out. You remember that, don't you, Mercedes? His teeth was knocked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah, I knocked the man's teeth out when I first started. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was so funny though. He needed that. <laughs> <laughs> he needed that in his life. All right, you said you're an arrogant. I mean, arrogant person. So what makes you an arrogant person? Okay, I'm very arrogant. I'm a Leo. My birthday's August the 18th. I'm a Leo. I'm a true lioness. Uh, I'm not conceited. I'm arrogant. Uh, I'm arrogant to say that I hey, I look better than you and I can do things better than you and I know I can. I'm arrogant because I know that I'm a big beautiful woman and I don't need nobody to tell me that. You know what I mean? And um, I just know I'm, I'm what's happening. I could care less about what people think about me and um, whatever a small person could do, I could do better. Put it like that. Were you always that way? Yes. Even when you was younger? Yes. All right. I like that. Yeah, I've always, my children, anybody can tell you, I've, I've always been like this all my life. So what do you think certain um, BBWs hate their sizes? You know what, I, I think that certain BBWs, the SS BBWs hate their size because society. Society mm -hmm. uh, always got something to say about somebody. But, you know, if you ever heard the term, creep around, sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine, mm -hmm. you mind your own fucking business. That's what I think society need to do. And... If society wasn't so bad on big people, big women and big men, then they'll lose the weight. You know what I'm saying? They'll mm -hmm. feel good about themselves. They start loving. First of all, you got to love yourself in order to lose the weight. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But society is so hard on uh, the obese, the BBW community to, I don't even want to call us obese because that's what society said. We are, we're human beings too. We're human beings just like everybody else. It, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that um, it's cool to even pick on uh, big people. Or, because, you know, you got big children that's growing up committing suicide and, you know, doing things to themselves because they big. Mm -hmm. And people just say the stupidest shit out their mouth. But see, a lot of a lot of times, um, I just think that people need to mind their own business and leave, leave big people alone. And once they start loving on themselves and they start saying, hey, you know what, I need to live for me. And then the way to start coming off, because that's, that's basically just always, self-hate is a motherfucker. Yeah, it is. Like lately, BBW been in for like the last few years. Like everybody want to be a BBW. Yeah, that's because we was happening. <laughs> <laughs> we was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of women have a problem keeping their weight up and down anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what size you are. All women, 
don't basically be satisfied with their bodies. If that's the case, they wouldn't go around and try to get fake titties, fake boobs. You know what I'm saying? Then they take the fat from their stomach and put it in their ass. But you know the fat in your stomach constantly grows. That's the first thing to get big on you when you gain weight is your stomach. Mm -hmm. So the, the same fat you're taking out your stomach and putting in your ass, it's going to continuously grow. And you know what? You're going to gain weight and get bigger and bigger and bigger. So a lot of girls running around here trying to get what we got. They trying to get what BBW's got. So... Next time you bitches in business, you want to get some steady light, let me know because I got a whole lot for you. I got that for you. Yeah. But they trying to be like us. They trying to get bigger and bigger and bigger because we what's happening. And, and, and a lot of people like, you know, me and me talking about they don't like BBWs, but that's a lie. <laughs> that's definitely a lie. I have no problem with getting a man. <laughs> All right. So um, recently, it was like you was in a car accident in Philly? No, not that happened a while ago. Oh, a while ago. Right. I was trying to tell him when I first started having the strokes. Okay. Uh, I had, we was, me and, me and this person, we was at a party for baths. And we was on our way back. And the and the, the hood of the, the guy had the hood of the car. The hood of the, the, the car. Listen, wait a minute. Let me go back. The guy had the hood of his car. You know those stretchy thingies? Yeah. He had that on his hood of his car. He was in the convertible. And so oh. uh, it, when it went up. When it hood went up, it hit both of us in our head. So the car started spinning around on us on the thing, and that person wig fell off. It was so funny her wig fell off. It knocked me out. But when I woke up, I had it knocked me out. So by the time I got home, I, I came back to New York. By the time I got home, I said I had bleeding on the right side of my brain. I had went to the hospital, and so that's when I found out. That's when I started having the strokes. Okay. Yeah. So. Wow. That experience did it change your life, or um, you viewed life differently because of it? Uh, the, the car accident? Yeah, with the stroke. The stroke. All the strokes, yeah, me being sick has really changed my life dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've always been a caring person, a compassionate person about people, but it made me want to, um, I'm, and plus I had cardiomyopathy. My heart was only be 40% blood through it too. So I had a few health issues that came up early on, you know, to me young, even though I'm, you know, a, a myth. Um, that was still young for me to have those issues uh, that I was having, uh, the the, uh, the heart the heart problems, uh, the, the um, and uh, the strokes because I had six strokes and seven TPAs, and then I counted many, many strokes and I had a hole in the chamber of my heart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it has changed my life, uh, life, and I want to live life. I want to live life. I want to live. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I want to live free. I'm free. Were you like that before? You know what? When I before I had before I got sick like that. I was selfish mm. to uh, to other people other than just my children. My children was my world, and uh, and my friends was my world. So I, I was selfish to other people. I didn't know how to show myself to other people, you know, because I w I just we was I'm, I grew up like that, you know, in one you know in one room, and mm -hmm. you weren't allowed to come out and things like that. So that's how I was I was hovering my people who I love. So I was selfish. You know, with myself to other people. So once I, um, once I got sick, I got angry because I yeah. couldn't walk. You know, I couldn't walk and stuff like that. I got angry at the world, even even worse. But then I had to realize that why not me? Because my mother died from cancer, my dad died from mm -hmm. cancer, my sister died from cancer, and so my sister's fighting cancer right now. She got cancer to her whole body, mm -hmm. and uh, she's been on chemo for a year. So I was like, okay, why not me? And I've been in nursing field for so long, uh, for t over twenty five years. And I was like, well, not, why not me? So I had to get, it, get pull myself together and say, you know what? I'm going to fight this. Okay. I'm not going to lay here and die. I'm going to fight this and I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk. And I'm going to get and I'm gonna, my heart is healed. My heart is healed. I don't take no more medicine. I take more supplements than anything. So, you know, uh, yeah, it has changed my life. I look at life so much differently now. I really do. All right. How was the, um, the rehab process? Ah. You really want to know that part. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the first time I could walk, I had my sons come get me from the hospital, put me in a wheelchair, and put me in the car. I couldn't walk for eight months. So I I, I, I was so mean and hateful. I was hitting them with my crutches. Mm -hmm. I, was doing all, I was doing all kind of shit. Seriously. And uh, I was used to crawl across the floor. I used to crawl across the floor because I was so mean. I said, just, I didn't want nobody to touch me. But then the second time uh, I couldn't walk, I decided to, uh, I didn't want to go to rehab either. I just went to outpatient. But then the third time, I had to go to rehab. Okay. So, being by yourself 
well, none of my children was coming to the hospital. None of my family, no friends was coming to the hospital. Well, so-called friends or whatever. So I was really, I really battled this by myself. Mm. And I even had cancer in my uterus. So oh, I had wow. that removed oh, yeah. too. So I, I've been through a lot from 2012 until now. But um, that's experience. Just experience is, is something else. So you said you're a fighter. Yeah, I'm a fighter. Yeah. I'm a winner. You're, you're a winner. I'm a winner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, let's go back to porn, okay? Okay. I know um, you filmed Death by a Panther. Yeah. Yeah, so that means you're you now retired from porn. Well, you know what? I just figured, like, I did Death by a Panther and I did Fire and Desire. Oh, yeah, Fire and Desire. Fire and Desire also. Um, I just figured they still need the help. Uh, the, the, the girls that I see now coming into the industry are garbage. Uh, they have no class, no and I'm saying this, I don't care fuck who don't like it, please put this out there. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have any class or pizzazz about themselves. And uh, first of all, it's all right to be classy and nasty. But um, you have to have some type of, you're selling a sexual fantasy. And you have, you have to give that man or that woman, because you got, I have women fans too as well. You have to give that person that fantasy to say, oh, you know what? Hey, you know what? I want to watch Supreme Diva today. She's so beautiful. Whatever, whatever how they feel about the, that person. But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, is if you guys want people to look at us like this and y'all study doing stuff like that, that don't mix. It's not going to work. Because if you're still doing the bottom of the barrel shit, then you're selling yourself short. You know, I, I'm Supreme Diva. If I'm gonna do something, I'm putting I'm putting my all in. I'm gonna step my I'm gonna step my foot in your ass. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I'm walking across a red carpet. I don't care if I'm making an appearance. I don't care whatever I'm doing. I'm gonna look good at all times. Listen, if you come to a, if you're doing a film and you look like a mess before you start fucking, you need a it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And then your hygiene, big women, you got to do something with your hygiene. You have to smell good and look good at all times. Don't just think that you're going to do it for one day. No, your hygiene should be a main thing about your body. Whatever you put in your body comes out your pores. So I'm just saying, only how the BBW industry and the SSBBW go and be, be, you know, get better, they have to do better. You know, these, these girls is out, they not porn material. You know, and you got these guys, these so-called producers telling these girls, oh, you're going to make it. You're going to make so much money. You're going to do this. You're not going to make shit. Because the companies that was paying aren't, aren't paying anymore. They're not shooting anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because people pirate your stuff and they put it up on free sites and you're not making no money. And then when you want to come to the escort side, you out here selling your ass for $40 and $50. So, and then you're doing custom videos for $50 and $60, you're fucking up the whole game. So see, that's how come they treat BBWs like that and because that's how they act. If you act, I don't give a fuck. You could put a, a $20 outfit on and buy some uh, a, a dollar store jewelry and you look like a million bucks. True. It's how you present yourself. They're not presenting themselves right. True. That's it. They're not presenting themselves right. And, and and if I had the patience to uh, open a website to deal with girl, to deal with women on that aspect, I would. But I would choke them. Mm -hmm. I can't deal with I can't deal with uh, uh, women like that. That's how come you always see me by myself. Okay. Cause I can't, I can't deal with it because you, anytime there's a lot of pussy somewhere, it's gonna stink. And then on top of that, everybody wants to be chief, mm -hmm. so it's kind of difficult dealing with women. Period. In any type of industry, I don't care if it's clothing, cooking, whatever. Oh yeah, I forgot you have your own production company. Yes. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, not the website production company. Yeah. So what's the difference between a production company and just you? You might as well just have your own website then. Well. Uh, the production company is that I'm shooting anything, everything. I can shoot anything, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm shooting uh, the Supreme Diva show, which will be coming out soon. I got the YouTube channel up already, and I'll be filming that live. And then I also got my radio show. I just haven't started the radio show yet because I just kept on getting sick. and you know, have, come on, Radio show or podcast? No, it's a radio show, oh. iHeartRadio, uh, in Chicago. And plus I travel, so it's kind of difficult. To, the days that I wanted, I messed up. I didn't start on time. And they gave my days away. So now they're trying to give me like a Wednesday. That's not suitable for me because I like I travel and stuff like that. So um, once we once we iron out a, a good day for me, then I'll be on a uh, radio show. But then again, I could do that on my own. So I don't know. Okay. All right. Now let me ask you these last few questions. These are the last few crazy questions. Okay. Okay. So um, what's the most difficult scene you've done? Whew. Okay, 
the most difficult scene I've done is with Jay Dickens. Uh, Jay Dickens is a uh, Jay Dickens is a a, 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 a beautiful. I love Jay Dickens. Uh, he's he's awesome sauce. Jay Dickens is one of the person I did scenes where it was difficult for me when I first the first scene I did. Well, any scene I do with Jay Dickens is difficult. But uh, and Nathan Threats. Why is that? Ah, oh, gosh, they was pounding me so hard I, I couldn't even breathe. <laughs> You mean one by one or just together? <laughs> one by one. I, I, you know what? I can't. Listen, I could barely take dick. I could barely take sex. So if I did like a threesome scene with two guys and me, I would get demolished. I probably would cry. Because I, I can't take dick like that. I don't even know why I'm a porn star. They just gave me that freaking name. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I, I couldn't I couldn't take I couldn't take Nathan's rest and Jay Dickens at the same time. That's, that's, that's a little bit. Now you're going to answer my next question. <laughs> What? Okay, so what's the biggest dick you ever had in porn? Oh. Well, the shoe man? Yeah. Well, my baby, uh, I shot with my friend and he has a really big dick. And yeah, that's my big, that's my booby face. But anyway, that said, industry guys, I would say Jay is, is really big. Jay Dick is really mm -hmm. big. He's probably the biggest one. And then Nathan Threats is pretty big, too. So those two guys right there, I think those are pretty Well, yeah, and John Q is pretty big, too. But all of them, all those guys have pretty, got pretty big dicks. Those guys, yeah, they, they're huge. But, yeah, but I think Jay Dickens is probably the best. The best one I've get, got pounded by thus far. <laughs> you funny. Okay, so what part of the industry is fake? What part is fake? Yeah, like is it the orgasm, the money shop, the squirting? Listen, squirting. I got a problem with squirting because I think squirting is pissing. I think them bitches be pissing. They be fucking pissing, or they holding water in their pussy and they squirting it out. Cause I could do that. I could just squirt a dish bottle up there and squish it out like that too. Okay. I mean, like it's, it's all about muscle control. I think they be pissing. I'm sorry. I think they, I just think that's fake. That's fake. But me, when I film personally, I can only speak for myself though. But for me, I don't squirt. Uh, I don't pee on people. But um, as far as coming, only only J the only person got oh, I howl. Okay, fine, fuck it, fuck it. I howl when I come. So I try to. Uh, you howl when you come. I howl like a wolf. That's how I come out slow when it's never sent sheep to kill a motherfucking wolf after me. That would be none. See, people never knew why that was my slogan since I came in the industry. That mm -hmm. was my slogan because when I come, I howl like like a wolf, and um, yeah. I do. So, yeah, only a few people only got me like that. Because normally I masturbate before I shoot a scene. But uh, sometimes they can catch me off guard. Like, okay, come, you know, right away. Yeah. And then sometimes on film, people hear me howl sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I howl loud. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so would you say virtual reality um, is, the is the future in porn? Yeah. It, it is. is. Why is that? Because uh, don't nobody really do the DVD thing no more, mm -hmm. you know. And I, well, I, I still get some burnt and I sell them, you know, for for collectibles. And I autograph them and send them to fans, but the ones who do support. But virtual everything is 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 what's up because people don't read nothing no more. They don't have the patience no more. Mm -hmm. So everybody used to picking up their phone and just pressing something in because this is a hand computer anyway. So they just pressing stuff in yeah. and they looking at it and that's the, that's that's good. Or put their card number in and they just on that. So virtual virtual money is probably like the best money you have ever made, like even right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. True. Okay, this is the last question. Okay. Okay. Um, if you could have if you have a dream your dream orgy with anyone past or present in the industry, who would it be with? An orgy? Yeah. You know, orgy consists of women too. Well, you can have females if you like. No, I don't want no pussy. I have. I don't think there's nothing attractive about another female as far as no. Oh, you know what? Another woman could we could actually compliment each other and say, "Oh, you look pretty" and stuff like okay. that. But another man say, "Hey, Joe, you look good." That's the guess fucking gay. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you know, women could compliment each other all the time. So, but anyway, uh, if I if I was gonna have an orgy, uh, that's that's not even say orgy because. You know, they be saying orgies have to have, you know, the women and the men. That's an orgy. I didn't know that. Yeah, an orgy consists of uh, uh, women and men having sex. Now, if you was having a gangbang, now if you say if I want to have a gangbang, okay. that's men. 
So if I was going to have a gangbang, I would have Jay Dickens. I would have Isaiah. I would have uh, Slim Poke. Ooh! Slim Poke. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, he's, a, he's a small, he's a, yeah, him. I would have Nathan Threats. And who else would I have? Hmm. Yeah, let's see. That's four guys, right? No, Ugh, fuck, no, never. Uh, no, he came at me one time like I want to have unprotected sex with you, and I said you got me fucked up. But no, not him ever. Um, let's see. Um, oh gosh, I said, I said slim poke. Oh gosh, that's about it. I don't really. Oh Jordan, Jordan is pretty hot too. Jordan from Indiana, uh, Jordan Triple X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he. Yeah, I would, I would, I would do him. Yeah. <laughs> I would do you, Jordan. I would do you. Yeah, I would freaking let you do me. Because I'd probably be standing and screaming like everybody else be doing. But yeah, uh, yeah, that, I think I'll do those five guys uh, on film. You no, know Jeremy? Who's Jeremy? Uh, what was that white guy? I forgot his name. Oh, white guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I would definitely shoot with white guys. I, I would love to shoot with white guys. But I think white guys are uh, intimidated by, by me. Uh, I, I've shot, I shot with white guys like Max Payne. He's one of the guys I shoot with, shot with. Um, this is another guy in Philly that I was hoping to shoot with. Uh, I forgot his name, but uh, maybe I'll think about it and tell you later. You could just edit it in. Okay. But I would love to shoot with white guys. But it's white guys with some big, really big cocks too. So, you know, I <laughs> <laughs> that made me twinkle my little nappy little wing. But yeah, um, yeah, I would love to shoot with white guys. Uh, Gosh, it's some it's some decent looking white man out there uh, that shoot that shoot too, and I be seeing them go granny porn and all that shit like that with, with huge cocks. But uh, yeah, I, I I I'm definitely that's definitely gonna be a project of mine maybe in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe oh I might mm -hmm. do that before I retire. I'm retired, guys. I'm retired. <laughs> I'm retired. You think I'm not, but I am. <laughs> Any last departing words? Well. Uh, I want you guys to, uh, you guys can follow me on my Twitter, Supreme Diva, the number one. Follow me on my Instagram, Supreme Diva, number one. And I also got another uh, Instagram, Supreme Diva, slash one. And my Facebooks are Kachina Baskin, Kachina Baskin. You guys can go follow me there. And you can contact me through booking Supreme D at gmail.com. And, oh yeah, wait, please follow my YouTube channel, guys. Follow my YouTube channel, you guys don't want to miss it. Because it's about fit life, and it's about feeling good, and I'm about to bring the noise. So, make sure you guys follow me, okay? Bye-bye.